Today, we are focusing on a really phenomenal topic, using video to say thank you and show donor impact. And I think that we might all be able to agree that at this point in time, in the, at this point in the world, uh, being able to connect with our donors and our supporters while not being actually able to interact with them at say an in-person event is so important. And video can be a massive part of maintaining a really awesome personal connection. And so we've been able to pair up with our friends at Bonjoro today to look at video in email and really explore that a little bit more in depth. And as we continue, let me uh, introduce myself. I recognize that we might have some people in today's Learning Lab episode that uh, maybe I haven't had a chance to meet yet. My name is Nick Miller. I'm the Director of Partnerships here at Fundraise Up. On the screen, you'll be able to see my email address and also a prompt to connect with me on LinkedIn. I really think LinkedIn is a fantastic way for us to connect as a nonprofit community, share ideas, share successes, and really educate ourselves based on what others are doing in the field. So it's such a pleasure to get to uh, present to you today from Fundraise Up through our Learning Lab series. And I also recognize that there might be some of you in the call that maybe aren't familiar with Fundraise Up. So we are a fundraising software company and what we've done is create the world's most individualized online donation experience. And we've been able to accomplish that by using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data science. And when you put all of this together, it helps us help you get better donations from happier donors. With that in mind, I would love to turn the stage over to my friend, Casey, over at Bonjoro. Casey, take it away. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for the intro, uh, Nick, and we definitely love you guys over there at Fundraise Up. Um, you know, as we were again chatting a little bit before the call, I think it's a great mix between the, uh, you guys are occupying that quantitative side, giving people the data that they need to be successful, and over on our end, we're very much on kind of the qualitative side, using video to build relationships and kind of create those deeper connections. Um, so we're excited to be here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my screen share here. All right, um, so yeah, personal video for nonprofits. Um, that's kind of the idea here. So um, a little bit of an intro on me. Um, I run the growth department at Bonjoro. We are a personal video email service. So we essentially allow people to take and record personal video either from your computer or from your phone um, and send it out to people. And we're gonna look at a whole bunch of use cases and interesting applications of how people are leveraging that. Um, but by my background essentially in, in the world of charity and nonprofit spaces, that's kind of my specialization, right? I work with hundreds, maybe thousands at this point of people in that world. And so I've been behind the hood, looked at a ton of data, a ton of stats, and basically had a lot of interviews and conversations around how people are able to get as much mileage out of personal video as possible. So that's a little on, on me. And um, basically the format that we're gonna follow here is just a quick look at like why video, right? There's a lot of mediums we can connect. Why is video uniquely positioned to be really effective, especially now of all times, um, as a channel to get connected with people. And then, you know, I think kind of the bread and butter, what I think will be one of the most informative parts of this conversation is really that deep dive into use cases. We're going to look at three specific use cases of companies leveraging personal video. I'll actually play you some of their videos and we'll have a little bit of a conversation about what that looks like. And then we'll open this up for Q&A. So if anyone has questions, please shoot those into the chat. Um, we'd love to help you guys be enga as engaged as possible and apply what we're kind of talking about to your specific situations. So the first example um, that I, I wanted to start with is an example that I kind of got inspired from a TED talk. And it was actually on someone who was an expert on memory and retention. And what they did is they took two groups and they basically had one group, they told them, I want you to remember a baker, the profession, someone who is a baker. And the other group, they just said, I want you to remember someone whose name is Baker, right? And they went back and they tried to see, I, I don't remember the exact time period, but let's say four hours later or you know, some session later, they went back and they asked people to remember that piece of information they were given. 
And they found that the people who were given the profession had an 80% higher retention rate. And basically their takeaway from that was that the way that we function as human beings is we work with context. When you hear the profession, you have all these associations that the brain creates. Oh, they might be wearing this hat. There's these kind of smells. There's all of these connections that you make that allow you to retain and remember that better. Whereas with the name, you have no context. You don't know, you know, male, female, you have no information that allows you to kind of create that mental image. And so I think as a, as a launching point, that's one of the reasons why video is so powerful is you have tone, you have body language, you have facial expression, you have all of these components that create that stronger level of kind of retention and memory and makes it kind of more of a experience that someone will recall and come back to versus I think as we all know, like we're so inundated right now um, with email from so many sources and you know, we have inboxes now creating things like promotion fil filters to push off a lot of the messaging that people are getting from like standard newsletters. It becomes harder and harder to kind of grab people's attention. So I wanted to kind of start with that because I felt like that to me was a really good kind of explanation of why I think video can be a really effective uh, medium. And the next thing is, it's just a little bit in the numbers, right? So I just grabbed a, a screenshot from, from one of our customers, but you know, one of the stark things that jumped out to me when I joined the Bonjoro team about a year ago, I actually come from an inbound marketing background. So I used to work, I've worked in kind of the inbound marketing space for a long time, helping people, you know, build up lists and, and be kind of sending out to 10,000, 20,000 people. And when I first came here, the open and click through rates were like, they blew me away. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and so I started to do some research and, and kind of came across, you know, like you'll see that I put in um, a little snippet from Harvard Business Review. And for anyone who's interested, I can send you all of these articles afterwards. I'm sure we're happy to share the slides. Um, but they were also kind of coming to that same conclusion that personalized video was kind of substantially increasing the engagement um, around messaging both from like, like a watch and click through and response perspective and even from an open perspective and, and sometimes i get that question they say well casey what is having video content have anything to do with your actual open rates well the idea there is because we primarily work as a one-to-one -one video i'm recording a video specifically for say nick as an example right because of that it's not treated as bulk mail so you're much, you're much more likely to land directly in that person's primary inbox, which of course is gonna have a big correlation to people actually seeing, ultimately opening, and then engaging with your, with your messaging. So Casey, I'm gonna jump in and uh, look for a little context here. So the, you know, these numbers in front of us look great, but can you provide a little bit of perspective for how much better these open and, and these conversion rates are than what we might see with say a typical marketing email. Yeah, for sure. And, and one thing that I would love to, um, you know, get everyone involved too, I'm sure that many people here that are marketing for their nonprofits probably have some firsthand experience to share. Um, and they can probably share, you know, data better even than I can about what their specifics are. But from my experience, and obviously it depends on how old the list is, you know, how active and frequently you've been engaging. There's a lot of variables that kind of go into this. But if you pull aggregate stats um, from HubSpot, from Campaign Monitor, there's been many of those that have kind of monitored. Usually you're looking at somewhere between 18 to 28% as an average for open rates. Um, and that's usually, again, for people that have a newsletter with, say, 5,000 people. And they're using that as a way to kind of send out and engage. So I don't know if there's necessarily like an exact benchmark. And again, I'd be interested to see what the feedback is from some of our listeners. But I would say that somewhere in that zone around 20% is probably um, typical. And even more so than open rates, I think that one of the really powerful parts here is if you, you know, look on the click and replies spot, you know, getting a third of your people to actually write back. Um, and obviously a, a little bit of a variance between these two examples here, but also having a very high click through rate. I think that is one of the things that we found um, is really powerful is that the way that Bonjouros are set up, they typically are very good at driving action. And again, we're gonna look at some specific Bonjouros together, um, but I think that just that model of 
having that personal video, creating that connection, and then having one concise thing that people can do next is, is very effective at getting people to then take that action. Awesome, thanks for sharing that, Casey. So uh, just, just to bring it full circle again, we're talking about maybe a high or an average of 28% open rate with traditional marketing email, and then a, a jump, a spike to 80%. I, I think that's very cool. And obviously Casey's gonna jump us in a little bit more to, to what this is gonna look like. Yeah. Um, so cool. So this is, I think, kind of the bread and butter of it, the good part, um, which is the use case deep dive. So I'm going to start, I'm going to walk you through a couple of these. I'm going to play some of these videos for you. Again, as we've noted on the other parts, if you have any questions, follow-ups, or anything you're curious about with the actual videos, please hop in, drop us a comment, let us know. Um, so the first one is something that um, if you're US-based, I'm sure you've heard of, um, which is the YMCA. And I'm going to actually go ahead and play this video from Tim here. And this video that he recorded um, actually led that night to a $3,000 donation. So it's kind of a direct uh, correlation wow, amazing. here. So <laughs> we're going we're gonna to play Tim's video for you guys. Oh, I, I don't think we're getting the volume on it this time. Oh, um, sorry. Thanks for letting me know. Let me see if I yes. can make sure to share computer volume. I'll refresh this so we can watch it from the top. Let me know this time. Hi, Lynn and Rick. It's Tim McElravey from Lake Wenatchee YMCA camp. And I am sending you this message out of the blue from Estes Park, Colorado, at the YMCA of the Rockies. I'm actually up at altitude, so I sound a little out of breath, so I apologize. And uh, the purpose why I'm here is we're learning all about other Y camps all across the globe. And we're talking about our mission and our values and just the impact that camp has on kids and kids' lives. And uh, it got me thinking about people that help make that possible. And I know you guys have given uh, a significant gift over the last couple of years. And I just wanted to reach out and just personally say thank you for the impact you had. I actually was able to use uh, the story of Ann and Steven and kind of their journey at camp and and uh, just your guys' connection to camp and and just giving without you know thinking about anything in return I just I just want you to know I just appreciate that and the, the impact that you guys are having at camp um, is is phenomenal in the in the link below I included a video uh, to a uh, our link to a video that we put out this year it kind of just shows the highlights of our summer and, and what Lake Wenatchee Y Camp is all about. I'm sure you guys already know it, but I wanted to let you know um, what your money, what your investment that you guys gave to the Y helped fund and helped make possible for a lot of kids this summer. So uh, thank you. And uh, just wanted to let you know when you're back up at the lake, come by and see us. Uh, I'd love to show you the Nelson cabin. I know that uh, we used some of those funds that you donated uh, to go towards that. We're actually supposed to pour our foundation this week and with any luck, knock on wood, we'll have uh, a roof up by the time the snow falls and uh, hoping to open that back up in the spring. So uh, from beautiful Estes Park, Colorado, uh, just again, just say thank you uh, for all you guys do for camp. And I hope to see you guys in the not too distant future. Take care. God bless. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. Okay, Casey, I just got to <laughs> say, I no joke got a, little, a few goosebumps on my arm because like this is so cool <laughs> like i am putting myself in the shoes of lynn and rick and this is essentially getting like a, a a christmas present in my inbox and it's not just some marketing video asset that uh the y pulled from their dropbox and and sent me a link to like he mentioned you know them by name and told them what their funds are going to very cool very cool yeah totally and i um well, did we get a chat here that came in? Yeah, it looks like we got a question here from Aaron. Mission, have you noticed any difference if the directors send the videos versus the regular staff workers? You know, we're spending 100 dollars per day. It'll be difficult for directors to make the videos. Yeah, that is an awesome question. And it's actually something that we address um, in the next use case that is coming. But the answer is we, we kind of see a little bit of both, right? And we do totally understand that sometimes when people have higher volumes, um, it can be tricky. So there's a couple things that, that people sometimes will do. So I think at a core level, 
what is most effective about video is like this video from Tim where you're really getting into the details and you're, you're making that, that person really feel like part of a community, right? Why this video led to a $3,000 donation, even though it didn't ask for anything, right? In my opinion is because that person really felt like valued. He's talking about where their funds are going. He's talking about, you know, the experience. Obviously it sounded like their kids were part of the camp and that's one of the reasons they initially donated, but that kind of approach. So I think that's always going to be the most effective. However, just as a note, we do sometimes see situations where uh, a president, a director, a board member, uh, we've even seen, you know, celebrities will record a video, send it over, and then you can upload videos into the system as well. So you could upload a video on behalf of one of those fundraising sources, and that could be an additional way that um, you could kind of tackle or approach that. Um, so yeah, but basically, and, and beyond even that example, absolutely in terms of teams, it's definitely not all, you know, the top level. You know, many of our largest charities have, you know, say 20 to 50 people who are actually in there recording these videos. So you definitely have staff involvement for sure. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of the, um, that piece there. And let me hop back into my share here. Um, so first I kind of want to talk a little bit about what the focus around YMCA was. So, you know, they were really had a focus around donor stewardship. So they wanted to get donors kind of more connected to the cause. And I think that you could kind of definitely see that from the video. Their target was on existing donors. So these are people that had given before and they were trying to kind of get those people back involved. Um, although again, I think that it's important to note, as we saw in that video, it was very non you know, pitchy, not telling someone, you know, hey, we want you to donate, it was very much focused on gratitude um, and kind of just making that person feel like a part of a community. And I think that's one of the things that we'll see across the other videos um, that you guys watch as well. But I think that's a big part of it, right? It's not just like, hey, thank you for being a donor. You know, that, that's nice, but that doesn't have the same emotional impact as someone who really took the time to get to know you, your specific contributions, what those contributions went towards, and kind of very much bring them into the process. I think that is what has the greatest impact. So my kind of big takeaway from this, I wanted to have for each of these use cases a little bit of a, a takeaway. Um, I think here is leverage context, right? That's the biggest one. The biggest takeaway is use context, get to know people, um, and don't go directly for the ask. And I think that a lot of people here, you guys are, are nonprofit specialists, so I probably don't need to educate around that. Um, but I think that just having this be, you know, part of the process of, of kind of bringing them in versus directly going for the ask, I think is a very smart um, idea. And of course, you know, uh, video, I think is a, a powerful touch. In my opinion, I don't think that Tim could have created that same impact with a written email. I think that all of us having watched that, we know that like there's just, you know, even the things where he's saying like, I'm a little out of breath, it, it kind of is almost funny, but it, it humanizes the experience. He's being grateful, but it's also showing like, hey, here's the actual human beings behind this. And so often in, when I see charities using video, it's like, yeah, they might use some big budget, like mass produced documentary or whatever style thing. And, I think there's places for that as well. But I think that when you actually are able to connect the employees and the members of the team with that cause, I think that's compelling. So that's, that's kind of the, uh, the YMCA there. The next one, and this is just, uh, I mean, these are all cool use cases, but I, I love the CURE team. They're phenomenal at, in terms of the impact and what they're doing and their use of, um, Bonjoro has been incredible and the results they've driven have been incredible. So I'm excited to kind of dig into this one. And so um, Joel, who basically is recording um, these videos, they're doing it as part of a relapse donor major gift campaign, meaning people who have given in the past but haven't given recently. I believe it's like haven't given in the last six to 12 months. And Joel actually is on site in Ethiopia at the hospital where these people are donating to these specific kids. And he's going to the specific kids that were recipients of those donations and then recording a video for the person who had donated to those kids uh surgeries so let's watch 
Hi. I'm here at the Cure Hospital in Ethiopia with Kasim. And we just wanted to say hi. A while ago you gave the Cure and we just want to say a big thank you. We know things are a little bit sketchy all around the world right now, um, but we wanted to let you know that we are committed to continuing the work that we do um, at all the Cure Hospitals uh, all the time. Um, on this page you also see a link to three of the stories of kids that, whose lives have been transformed by uh, the work around the world. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, so, cute. so cute. That's the, the the thrust of that one. Um, so yeah, um, I mean, I think that with Cure's video, um, I'll, I'll get kind of into this. So first, just to be clear, I always like to like lay out kind of um, their approach. One of the things that I loved about Cure is we got connected with Cure, and Cure was like, this seems really cool, but. Um, they weren't like, to be candid, they weren't 100% bought off. They were like, I don't know, it seems like it might take a lot of time. So what we designed with them, which is so cool because it worked. <laughs> if it wouldn't have worked, it wouldn't have been as cool. Um, but we basically had them do a 50-50 kind of control split. So I said, hey, during this next campaign that you guys are doing, I want 50% do exactly what you were doing normally. And 50%, I want you to use Bonjoros. I want you to record how much time it takes you to make those videos. And let's see kind of what happens. And they went from literally having, I think, like one or two seats with us uh, to that first major diff gift campaign, the Bonjoro cohort raised $10,000 more dollars. And they were like, wow. this is awesome. And, and now they're one of our biggest um, nonprofit uh, customers. So that was a really exciting success. And, and their focus had been basically trying to get $500 or $1,000 donations from some of those past um, relapsed givers. So um, that's kind of the idea there. And, and, and why it works to me, again, I think um, Joel and the Cure team does such a good job about connecting people to that end cause, right? Like they're giving to provide these surgeries for kids in these third world countries who don't have access to that kind of medical care. And they're showing the kids, right? Like that's, that they're, they're taking out, um, you know, I think that kind of like barrier in the middle and they're bringing people to be connected together. So I think that is the heart of why their videos um, are just really powerful and compelling for people. And, and Casey, there's two things that you've said so far that really stuck with me. Uh, one of them you just mentioned, there's a concern about time. Is this going to take me a lot of time to do? But I, I almost feel that you'll end up spending more time writing an email and then rewriting it and then rewriting it a couple more times than you will spending about 30 seconds sending one of these Bonjoro videos. So I think absolutely people will recognize a time saving. And then the other thing you mentioned a little earlier was about the, the personality that is produced by these videos. And that's not something that you pick up in an email that's been copy edited by your marketing team. There's something genuine and authentic about somebody speaking to you and like you said maybe even being out of breath because they're at a camp that is you know well above sea level <laughs> yeah exactly so i mean i think that when you're reaching out to people right like you kind of have as you noted there's there's a couple options right like you can obviously send people an email blast right and i'm not saying you know again i've, I've been part of the automation world for a long time i think there's absolutely a place for automation i'm not an anti-automation guy by any means but I do think that, you know, when it comes to your actual ability to drive specific results, it can become a fairly straightforward equation. It's like, okay, I can reach out to say, say you reach out to 5,000 people with an email blast and you can do that with click and button. If you reach out to 250 people with personal videos, it's going to take you a lot more time, right? Each video will take you a couple of minutes, but then you look at what does that correlate in terms of end results? It, you know, depending on how many campaigns you run per year, if each of your campaigns starts to raise, 10 to $50,000 more, well, you just got three more employees or, you know, whatever that, you know, boils down to based on the number of campaigns you run. But the point being is that you'll generate additional revenue, which you can then use to staff more people that are helping in that capacity. So um, I think that, you know, that's part of the cause. And the other thing too is, you know, with donors, it's a lot about like the, the lifelong relationship, right? It's not just about a one-time yes. donation. It's about how can you build that connection with your cause and create these people over a lifetime. So when you send that personal video that takes you two and a half minutes to record, you know, in the beginning can feel kind of scary, like, okay, that's a lot of time commitment if I'm doing a bunch of these. But if that person, you know, if you get 
you know, say 25% more people that maybe would have just been one-time donors and become lifelong because they're like, that's amazing. Like, this is the type of organization that we're dealing with. Someone who cares about me as an individual enough to record that kind of video. Um, that's pretty cool, right? So, Very so cool. I think that's, that's kind of my, uh, my thoughts on that one. And, and again, the takeaways here um, are, are twofold. So one is what we kind of talked about, which is creating that connection between the recipient and the cause. This one um, is one that I haven't kind of dug too much into, but I think that that call to action is really important. You know, as we looked at in the beginning, um, we saw that there was those strong click-through rates. And one of the things that I advise when I'm talking to nonprofits is really think about, even if you're just sending a thank you message, how you can get people more engaged. Sometimes people will invite them to join their Facebook community. Sometimes people will invite them to an event. It doesn't have to be, a, again, an ask. We're not saying like, oh, you should push people to make donations, but there can be a next step. And an interesting example here with Cure is, Cure actually launched a documentary film that was on Amazon Prime and had Tim Tebow in it, and you know, all of these, these high profile people. And one of the things that they did really, really well with these Bonjoros is drive attention from that personal video to get more people onto that, watching that documentary. We actually have a use case on our website that kind of talks about this in depth, but um, it was something like four to five X the amount of like monthly minutes in terms of watch time on their documentary once they started essentially sending out these personal videos. So it's a huge impact through that call to action, which then obviously trickles to the fundraising on the back end. So that's another thing I think, again, that is powerful about these is to think about what you're kind of trying to drive people potentially to do, even in the context of a thank you video, right? The first one was like, watch the summer camp video. This one might be like either check out the impact or again, watch the documentary film is another common CTA they use, but that's an important part of that process, I think. And if anyone has any questions on the cure one, again, same thing, feel free to drop in the comments, happy to speak to that. And otherwise, I'm gonna hop to the Heart Foundation. Um, so the Heart Foundation guys is one of the largest, I think actually is the largest, um, heart health focused charity out of Australia. So, um, you know, Bonjoro as a company, we have people all over the globe. I'm out of the United States. Um, we're actually headquartered out of Sydney, Australia. And so um, this one has been, has been with us for a long time and is really, really neat and creative with their application. Um, probably of all the charities we deal with, potentially the most uh, creative. So it's kind of fun. So what the Heart Foundation, they have a whole bunch of different charity drives. One of the ways that they do a lot of fundraising is with schools, okay? And so with this one, I'm going to share with you, it's from a campaign called Jump Rope for Heart. And what they actually start doing is creating these challenges and creating all this engagement with their students that then trickles up, um, obviously, to getting the parents and to getting these, um, you know, the rest of the people kind of involved. And so for this one, this is um, Monique who basically is recording personal videos for classrooms. And so just to kind of show you how you could have a little bit, obviously the first two we were looking at are kind of in the personalized context. This one, she's addressing a classroom. Um, so you get a little bit of scale, but um, is, a, is a cool video. So let's check it out. Hey guys, it's Monique from Jump Rope for Heart. Um, you have had such a fantastic start to the program. I know you started week two um, and you've been skipping so much already, which is fantastic to see. But I thought since I was working from home, some of you may be back at school, some may be still at home, that I would set a little bit of a skipping challenge this week. It's really simple. You pick your favorite song. What is the first song that comes to mind that you like to dance to at the moment or anything listen to? Um, so I've picked my favorite song and what we're going to do, it's really, really simple um, challenge, is I want you to see how long you can skip for. So you start the song and see if you can skip the duration of that whole song. Now every day, you might not be able to skip the whole song, but every day we're gonna keep practicing and see if by the end of the week, we can skip the duration of that song. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of an example um, today and picked my favorite song. So let's go. Go, go. 
So crisscross makes me want to jump. Um, very, very fun song. Um, so that song should go for nearly three minutes. Um, so when I'm done with this video, I'm going to see if I can finish the song and skip the whole time. Um, if that gets too easy for you, chuck in a few little crisscrosses or any tricks that you can do. My dogs have just arrived. <laughs> um, so yeah, you're doing such a fantastic start. Um, I'm really proud of you all. So keep sharing your page, keep logging all that skipping online. The more that you do online, the more it feels like I'm there with you. So good luck with the challenge. Let me know how you go. If you smash it, I want to see it. Um, I miss being out at all the schools. So yeah, good luck, have fun. Um, hope you pick some really fun songs. Bye. So there, so there we go on that one. Um, and you know, this one is again, one that's had tremendous success. So, you know, their focus was basically to get more students engaged the way that you get, if anyone here is running, you know, fundraisers through things like schools, you guys know that it's like the more kids who participate, the more donations they gather. And typically, you know, before starting this test, I would, they were taking me through, they have, they're very, very organized with their data they were raising like a couple thousand dollars per school. And since implementing this, their top school raised $46,000 and their engagement rate was up like five to six X. And so it was a wow. pretty dramatic um, change. We were, we were looking at the cost of, of their accounts or something. And I want to say that the ROI was something like 2,000, 2,800% ROI. Um, <laughs> <laughs> from, their, from their investment. So they were able to drive a lot of attention. And, you know, again, I think from these examples that we've seen, all three of them so far, it's, you know, they're candid. They're candid, yes. they're real, things are going on, you know, dogs are walking by in the back of <laughs> the guy and the first one's out of breath. You know, they, they take that time to make it human. And they aren't obsessed about, you know, perfect lighting or perfect construction. They're just focused on trying to create that human relationship. And I think that at a core, that's one of the things that's so cool about personal video is it's incredibly accessible to everyone, right? Like, cause you don't need those things. You don't need a studio. You don't need a light wall. You don't need the perfect sound. In fact, I would argue that people resonate with you better if you're just authentic and you're candid because people can relate to that, right? Like the people that you're, you're connecting with, they probably don't have perfect sound and lighting and whatever else. And they have kids running around too. And so it's a way that you kind of bring that barrier down. Um, and specifically in the case of the Heart Foundation too, they make it fun, right? I think this is something that, you know, it, it's challenging because the causes that we serve and that we work with are often um, really challenging things, or, or, you know, heart-wrenching issues. And so it, that can be challenging, but I think joy and laughter and being able to kind of bring that into the process is still important. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that they've been really effective at, at the Heart Foundation is, you know, almost kind of, you know, gamifying, I guess, if, if we could use that word, that experience and making it so that they're doing these challenges and they're getting people engaged. And, um, you know, if anyone's curious, we're putting up um, a use case soon on our blog with this. But if you just read through the responses, I mean, people are so excited. They're sharing it. They're you know, the kids are bringing so much energy into that process and, and they're kind of getting them involved. So, um, yeah, that is the, uh, the Heart Foundation um, example there. And all, you know, anyone, again, who is curious about um, any of those three that we've kind of just laid out, um, please let me know, shoot that out. Um, I would love to kind of get a sense of what you guys are working on, where, where you guys are at, um, both from kind of like size of a charity and, and what you guys do, as well as what some of the challenges that you guys grapple with. You know, again, Bonjoro is used in an incredibly, you know, wide array of applications. So we've looked at like relapse donors. We looked at like a little bit of a challenge here. But, you know, we have people that are, for instance, moving from physical events to online galas, right, and fundraising events. That's another application, right? A personal invite in your inbox, from the people that are like inviting you to join versus kind of like a mass message. That's a common application. We see people that are celebrating milestones with people, right? Personal milestones or, or you know, whatever else makes sense in the context of that charity. But um, basically either letting them know about specific big breakthroughs that have happened as an organization, as a charity, hey guys, we were just able to build this facility because of you. 
like check out this facility with me. I'm going to walk around and, and, you know, show you around here. That's like one application or again, even flipping the script um, and getting, you know, the actual people on the other side involved, learning about their lives, getting context about your actual donors and then celebrating their milestones, right? When they hit key things, you know, that's one of the things that I've seen. Um, we have a woman named Joan who runs a nonprofit community who's incredibly successful. She's got like, you know, 3,000 plus paying members who are part of it. And one of the things that she does is she works with basically all of her members. She sends these personal videos and is very, very engaged about when they get a grant or when they, you know, get a really successful fundraising campaign, she brings them into the fold. And so that's kind of another, another arm of this, if you will. So Casey, there's some really big takeaways that I've latched onto as we've looked at some of these examples. And of course, today we're looking at how we can use video to number one, say thank you when a donor supports our cause. And number two, to show the impact of their gift. And I think we've seen some really fantastic examples of that. We've definitely had that personalized thank you experience where somebody is uh, calling us by name and saying, hey, Nick, thank you for supporting our charity with your gift. And it's massively meaningful. And we've seen what some of the return on investment has been there. And then in other examples, we've seen really a boots on the ground approach to showing impact where you literally see, in that case, the children who you're supporting through uh, your donation. So it, it's really impactful. And what I unpack further from there, and we just touched on this with the Heart Foundation example, is that you don't need a lot of fancy gear to pull this off. You don't need to spend your marketing dollars on hiring a film crew. You don't need to go to Best Buy and purchase a really expensive camera. This type of personal video is something that you can do with your iPhone and the Bonjoro app, for example. This is something that is highly engaging. And like Casey mentioned, there is such a personal and authentic touch to the natural cadence and natural flow of, of filming this for your donors. Heart, Heart Foundation is a great example. Again, the dog comes wandering by. I mean, you, you can't really script that, you know, in, in a studio that would never happen. But it's, it's part of life. It's a part of what the donor encounters in their daily life. You know, they're on the phone, they're on a Zoom call, and their five-year-old comes running through the living room, or the cat jumps up in front of the camera, you know? And this, this is all part of creating a personal connection and removing that barrier that often exists between you know, a donor and maybe a highly produced marketing video that a nonprofit might put out. And truly, there is a time and there is a place for content like that. But what personalized video in, in email really opens up the door to is a truly personalized, uh, individualized uh, experience for donors. Yeah, hundred percent. And again, like, as I was saying with the automation stuff, like as I'm not an enemy of automation, I'm totally not an enemy of those well-produced videos as well. You know, again, it's important to note, as I was talking about, with Cure, one of the things they were using personal video for was to drive attention to their documentary film. So I think, again, these mm -hmm. things are complementary. They, they don't, you know, uh, cut each other out. I think that you can use, you know, personal video to set the relationship so there is more context then around when you're trying to get people to that next stage. Um, and I think I saw a question pop up. Let me see. Um, yeah, this is a great question that's coming through from one of our viewers, and they're asking, uh, how, how do we pitch this to, you know, the higher ups? Maybe you, you are not a director in your organization. Maybe you're a gift processor. Maybe you're an assistant or just don't have that decision making uh, capability. And I think one of the really valuable uh, stats that that Casey's been able to show us today is the return on investment here. So Casey, perhaps you can revisit what that's looked like for some of the Bonjour customers out there. Yeah, 100%. And, and just kind of a quick note on this, because I've definitely been through this a lot, especially with our medium to larger size organizations, right? Like they do have to get the team on board, they have to get sometimes the board on board. Um, so I totally understand this. I think the first thing is, 
one of the best ways in my opinion to illustrate personal video is to show people personal videos. That's why I wanted the core yes. of this presentation today <laughs> to be like me playing you guys videos because to me that is the most compelling way like show them examples of actual personal videos. Um, I think that's like step one in terms of getting kind of people excited. The second thing is um, I always encourage people, especially those, like, again, I mentioned this with, with uh, Cure that are hesitant, run a test, right? Like, that's one of the beauties, you know, inside the Bonjoro ecosystem, we track deliveries, we track opens, we track responses, we track clicks, we give you a lot of analytics about exactly how things are performing. And so come into it with a specific objective. Right, and if you have that specific objective in mind, then it's easy, very easy for you to establish after some test period whether it worked or it did not work. Right, um, and that can either be again like you know specifically donation based if it's around a fundraising campaign, or maybe it's about kind of the relationships you're building. So you're looking at responses, how many people that you weren't connected with before end up being connected, and then you know a common thing that I have people track is if you're able to stick with it for a few months of testing you know look at over the course of say six months or even a year the donation amounts that come from that bonjoro cohort versus that come to from another and it looks like we just got another question about um essentially bonjoro and fundraise up so nick do you want to do you want to kind of spearhead that one for us oh uh, you're on mute nick you're on mute Apologies, everyone. <laughs> so I was really hoping that we would get this question because that is truly where some of the, the magic can come into play here. And so I'm going to switch over to sharing my screen with you and we'll take a look at what this looks like in practice. So in a moment here, you'll be able to see the home page for the perfect pause. Uh, rescue and Adoption Center. This is a, a demo site that we've set up. So uh, unfortunately, we uh, don't have any cats here in the office that we're caring for at this time. But uh, for the purposes of today's demonstration, let me show you what this would look like if you are a Fundraise Up customer or look at Fundraise Up and think it would be an asset for your fundraising strategy. Spoiler alert, it definitely is. So when I click this Donate button, we of course get our fundraise up checkout experience. Let's say that uh, I'm brand new to this organization. So let me just start with a $5 gift. And I I love cats, so I'll go ahead and make it monthly. So they have my, my support in the coming months. And uh, let me just drop in some test credit card information here. Oops. And so I've just made my donation to the Perfect Pause uh, Rescue and Adoption Center here in Brooklyn. And so what would happen now, and uh, let me just drop in my employer information here as well. So I've, I've just made my gift. And what would happen now is the transaction would of course be logged in the Fundraise Up platform and leveraging Zapier, which is an integration that is uh, possible with Fundraise Up, what I can do is create this custom workflow here. And so you'll see here that in Fundraise Up, when there's a new donation, we want to create a task in Bonjoro. And what's really powerful about both of our platforms offering this type of flexibility through uh, Zapier is that we can send pretty much any information over to Bonjoro that we want. So I'm going to hop over to my Bonjoro account really quick so you can see what this might look like. And uh, this is a, a fictitious donor and a fictitious information that you're seeing here. But uh, this donor's name is Jared Dunn. And I can push over information from Fundraise Up and I can say, let me show the donation amount. Let me show whether it's a recurring amount. I can include comments from the donor. And uh, what will happen is in Bonjoro, I'll get a task to send Jared a video. And here's what's really cool is Jared no, will- oh, oh, Sorry, sorry Nick, go just ahead. a bit. Just yes. to hop in to make sure people know, 
So if you click on, um, on the top left-hand side where there's that little two icon, that's where your new task will live. So yes. if you log in on your computer or your phone, you're just going to have a set of to-dos and you basically can just log in and go. And I saw someone also asked about um, Bloomerang. Yes, you can do Zapier in that same capacity. Yes, absolutely. And, and truly, if you're not yet familiar with the power of Zapier, it unlocks a lot of possibilities for your nonprofit. So it's something worth looking at. If you're a Fundraise Up customer, you can reach out to your nonprofit success engineer to learn more. And you can also email me or Casey afterward, and we're both happy to look at that a little bit more with you. Let me just update my screen share here for a second so we can see my full desktop, because what I want to do is jump over to see that video that our donor would have received. So here we are. Um, let me make sure. Can everybody, uh, Casey, can you see this okay on your screen right now, my Bonjour video? Okay, awesome. Yes, I can see. So, Again, the, the donors just made a gift to our organization, Perfect Pause. And what I love about Bonjoro is that it's completely customizable. So you'll notice that we've included a custom image of a, a cat in the background. We've also been able to include our nonprofit's logo. And I can even customize the brand colors so that they match up perfectly. And so this is the video that uh, Jared would receive and I'm going to click play and uh, assuming zoom is functioning correctly. We'll hear the audio. Casey, if you can't hear it, just give me a thumbs down and I'll rectify that pretty quickly. Okay. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course that would happen when we're, when we're doing a demo here. Let's try again. Uh, no volume. Okay. No volume. Apologies, folks. Let me go ahead and fix that for us here. Yeah, I think it's just a little check on the uh, yes on the Zoom meeting. Oh, and you know what? Uh, it looks <laughs> like Mac OS is not going to let us do this today, which is okay. I will uh, give you the synopsis. Uh, this is an opportunity for me, as in this case, acting as the fictitious executive director of this organization, to thank Jared for his donation. And because I'm able to specify the type of information that's sent over from Fundraise Up to Bonjoro, I know exactly what I need to reference. I'll know what campaign Jared gave to, I'll know the amount he gave to, again, whether it's a recurring gift, maybe he included some notes and said, hey, I've adopted a cat from Perfect Pods before. And so I can reference all of that in this video to truly individualize it to Jared. And what I also love about Bonjoro is you have the opportunity to really include your brand voice. So for example, I've included this message here and because we're a cat adoption rescue shelter, I said, hey, Jared, thanks for being the cat's meow. And we get to insert a little bit of that perfect pause brand personality there. So yeah, that, that's kind is, of what it looks like. <laughs> this is an awesome test. And and you know, just as a um, just as a note uh, from looking at a lot of different backgrounds and kind of setups, this one is a, is an awesome example. If you guys do end up um, testing out and sending some of these out, I think those side frame images exactly like Nick did here. And if you guys saw the video we did with Cure, you'll see the same thing that they had it kind of on that side panel. Exactly. I feel like what happens there is it doesn't doesn't take away from that central video. Right. If you do like a full big, you know, background of a jungle or something, it can be exactly. a little bit distracting. But this is very uh, complimentary. So it's, uh, it's cool. I like it a lot. Exactly. So, you know, you, you, uh, our viewers in the audience, you, you might be considering, OK, what would this look like for us? Are we are we an animal shelter? Are we combating homelessness? And maybe you're starting to dream about what this experience could be like for your donors. And truly, it is something incredible. And one of the reasons that we wanted to to highlight this this platform today is because you can integrate it into so many other applications and systems that you might be using. Of course, today we're highlighting how Bonjoro can be integrated into Fundrate Up really easily. In fact, we had a higher ed institution that leveraged Bonjoro to send out personalized thank you videos for their coronavirus student emergency fund. And the feedback there was incredible. And Casey and the Bonjour team are going to be publishing a, uh, a, a study on what some of these replies have been from people. And it's, it's so fascinating to jump in there and see how engaged people are. 
uh, anecdotally, you know, we have people responding and they say, wow, thank you so much. Like, this is so innovative. This is so creative. We like really appreciate the personal touch. And it's just another way, not only to say thank you and to show impact, but to keep your organization front and center in the minds of your donor. And so it's absolutely powerful for building that relationship and building retention as well. And as we saw in the questions, you know, somebody had asked if this integrates with Bloomerang and Bloomerang also offers a Zapier integration. So you can really get creative with how some of these workflows uh, work. So yeah. for example, we've shown Fundraise Up and Bonjoro, but exactly with Bloomerang, you can achieve the same type of functionality. Yeah, absolutely. And just one thing I wanted to chip in too, like for anyone who's looking at this and they're like, okay, this seems good, but I don't really know what Zapier is. I haven't <laughs> used it before. Is it, is it really that simple? Um, we'll actually, on a call, I'm more than happy to just set it up with you, right? So if anyone is like, I want to do this, but I'm kind of nervous, um, we can, we can knock that out in five to 10 minutes, right? So it's, it's yes. definitely, you know, feel free to connect in, um, with either of us. And I, I can definitely help you out on that front. Um, if anyone is, is concerned about, uh, about that <laughs> element of it. Yes. You, no need to fear what all of the buttons and switches do. Absolutely. The Bonjoro team, the fundraise up team, we're all here to help really make this a good experience and to ensure that you have this opportunity and you can add a tool like Bonjoro into your toolkit. Uh, with that said, if there are any other questions that you might have about what you've seen today, we've taken a look at some really great examples. We've touched a little bit on what the integration looks like uh, between Fundraise Up and Zapier and Bonjoro, but any other questions you might have, uh, please feel free to drop them into the chat here. There's, uh, of course, also a Q&A function in Zoom that you are more than welcome to utilize. It looks like we did just get another question in here. Question is, is there a general percentage range of video views you see on mobile versus desktop? If you have a phone number, can it be sent to the donor's phone? Great yeah, question. all good questions. So, so the first thing in terms of, of kind of percentage, like, okay, so the range of video views on mobile versus desktop, that's interesting. I don't know, I have to look back at like our data panels to have like specifics on that, like how it performs on mobile versus desktop. I can tell you from, um, again, kind of like anecdotal experience that a lot of our people use phones. As you saw in a lot of the examples, the reason they're using the phone is it allows them to be anywhere, right? It's like kind of harder to carry your laptop around um, while you're outside in a forest or you're going on a walk or you're showing someone on a tour, right? And so I think that because of that reason, um, that's one of the powers of mobile. And it's also one of the things that, you know, Bonjoro has a very robust mobile application, right? Some of the other video tools in this marketplace were kind of designed just to be desktop tools. And some of them have desktop apps, some of them don't, but they're like, even the ones that do tend to be very bare bones. So that's one of the things that we wanted to really invest in is not only to have that mobile app, but as Nick was noting earlier, also have the ability to bring in variables, right? What we call like custom attributes. So you have context on that person's say past donation history, these other variables that allow you to really speak to their specific situation and have that be seamless where you're just like getting a notification on your phone. You have all the context there, you record it. Um, so that's the general idea. The next question is like, what if you just have a phone number? Can you still basically send one of these out if you don't have an email? And the answer is yes. It's just a little bit of a different process. So when you record, you have your task queue where people come in, you typically automatically, right? Although you can upload a list of say a hundred people that you want to record videos for, and you can just record from there. But we also have a Chrome extension. And with that Chrome extension, it's basically going to take a video, it's going to put it in a library, and it's going to give you an open link. And with that open link, you could text that to someone, you could WhatsApp, you could send that wherever you want. Any video that you send through our system um, in the normal way through the task queue, if you hit that open original button, you'll also get that link that you can use anywhere you want. But again, in a situation where you only have a phone number, yes, you can still create videos for people. You would just use that Chrome extension. Very cool. And hey, Casey, there was one other, there was a question early on in the presentation that I wanted to circle back to. And, you know, somebody had mentioned, what if we're getting a lot of donations? And 
if this responsibility sits on one person's shoulders, how are they ever going to have time in the day to do that? Well, of course, one of the great features of Bonjoro is this task list and the ability to assign to others. So I was wondering if you could just describe that a little bit further for our audience members who may be thinking, hey, I don't know if I as the executive director can handle all of this. Yeah, 100%. And so uh, as a quick preface to this, I just want to let people know, we get between two, 2,000 to 2,500 new trials each month, and we personally welcome every single one. I personally myself do about 30 to 40 per day, and that usually takes me about, you know, anywhere from like 45 minutes, I would say, as av an average right and so one of the advantages is when you have customer contact you aren't having to go back to say your like crm or your core system to be like checking all this data you have it right there you just click record look at the context and then you can send it out and so because we use that too that can be like a fairly turnkey process um but the other part about this too is that everything comes in this queue where basically you have the ability to assign it to any users on your team right and they can see their specific queue so it's easy for you to distribute and different teams do this different ways some people they you know someone goes through as like almost like a dispatcher quote unquote and they'll look at like the value oh hey this is like a vip i want that to go to x person these vip donors should go straight to our director right and other people just round robin it so teams are coming in you go in you record once you record it pulls it straight out of that task queue so you can have 10 people in there that are just grabbing the very next one and they're working through it. But one of the things I encourage people to do, because that actually is also, especially for some of our larger organizations, one of the number one hurdles when I sit down with the whole team, people are like, this is cool, but like, I don't know if we have this bandwidth, right? They feel nervous about their ability to record that many videos. And so, you know, part of what I tell people is to experiment and try it. Um, we do have a feature called roll up. So if you want to, you can grab, you know, 25 videos at once and you can record it out. We will allow you to do that inside the system. But I always tell people test out, at least do a cohort where, you know, you send at least 50 personal videos. So you can see the responses, the donations, the connections that you get from that. Because again, anytime you go beyond one to one, you are changing that dynamic with the inbox from this is just a personal one to one message to again, this is like a marketing message that you're sending in bulk. Um, so, and I'm always happy to hop on with anyone and go totally down the rabbit hole of email deliverability. <laughs> That's kind of my background, not for this uh, meeting today, but if anyone wants to chat about that more in depth, I'm more than happy to. Fantastic, awesome insight today. I'm pulling up a slide that you'll be able to see here in a moment on my screen. Uh, we are, of course, here at uh, about 2 p.m. It really feels like time flies sometimes. Uh, <laughs> this has been a really awesome experience, I think, for everybody who's in here to really get a chance to imagine uh, what they might be able to do with a service like Bonjoro, especially when they couple it with a powerful fundraising platform like Fundraise Up. With that said, our next Learning Lab episode will be on October 7. It is on better board giving with Fundraise Up. And this is gonna be a really a fascinating dive into how you can get your board more engaged in the act of giving. And there's this interesting concept of a board member either getting the money they need to show their support or giving it themselves. So. It's going to be a fascinating topic. We'd love to see all of you in there. Again, it's going to be October 7 at 1 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. if you're on the West Coast. And that said, we want to thank everybody for joining us here today for Learning Lab from Fundraise Up. Casey, it's been such an honor and a privilege to get to host you for this. I, I loved everything that we got to see today. And I truly hope that uh, in many ways, we've opened a door of opportunity for our viewers to try something new. So thank you from everybody yeah. here at uh, Fundraise Up. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Nick. And thank you for everyone in attendance for, for kind of uh, listening in uh, about, about video and kind of how it's interplaying here. And, and for anyone that um, wants to look at those sample videos, or wants to contact me or anything around um, Bonjoro, I'm sure we'll be able to give that contact information out um, and you guys can get connected in. So hope everyone has an amazing rest of their day. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll talk soon.
All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a beautiful rest of your Wednesday, and we will see you next time. Take care. Thank you.